I am going to, let's see here, put on a quick intro. All right. I'm going to put on a quick intro for about one minute, and then I'm going to share while I'm doing that, and then I'm going to pull you up. Okay. All right, here we go. get started now. Let me just turn this off. Get this going here. All right, let's bring up our new friend up onto the screen. See if I can get her name right. <laughs> let's see. Here we go. All right. Let's see. Start video. Mute. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Is it Fabiana? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Is it okay? Awesome. It, I can't see you. Hang on, let me see if I get what. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. your video's on, but you're you're coming in uh, as a black screen. Hold on, that might. Just take your time. Yeah, you uh, I am. Um, maybe there this you go. will work. How you doing? See, that's because I work with a uh, separate screen and my laptop. Mm -hmm. So, Fabienne. Hey there. Is it Fabienne? Fabienne. Yeah. <laughs> Fabienne. Yeah. You give it a little bit of an Italian swing. First well, of all, happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> That came in handy. <laughs> yeah, it, it did. My husband just had his celebrated his birthday last week. So. Oh, wow. That was perfect. Sag too. Yeah, you can't make this stuff up. Yeah, well, mm -mm. sages are good. It's yep, sure are. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's a pleasure to meet you. Sorry about the uh, the thing that happened with the last show. We were, we were in the middle of, uh, you know, the, the direct guidance you get in the moment that you got to follow. Mm -hmm. but, uh, it worked out okay. It's a pleasure to meet you. It's a pleasure. Same to here. You. Pleasure meeting you, and thanks for having me. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I know you've had quite a journey from you know reading through your bio, um, and uh, and I'll and I'll put that bio on the uh, on the the live itself once we're done. But I want to touch. I want to touch base on it just kind of uh, go through some high points here. Mm -hmm. you're, you're actually from uh, the Netherlands, Holland, right? Mm -hmm. The itty bitty country lodge between Belgium, UK, Denmark, and Germany. Correct. Did your spiritual quest led you to try a variety of spiritual teachings and healing modalities, yeah, but none hit home like Archangel Michael's wisdom teachings as they've been brought forth by Rona Herman. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Vizani, Rona is a powerhouse still working for Big Mike at almost 92 years old. Is that right? Yeah, she just turned uh, 92 November 30th. Wow. Wow. Yeah, and you talk about uh, how she and uh, your friend Randall were instrumental and in introduced you to your husband, author mm -hmm. uh, Brian Tilgman. 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 Yep. Tilgman. Uh, and he's the author of Telos, Welcoming New Earth. 
sounds pretty incredible. That sounds pretty incredible. Would love to get uh, him on the show or maybe both y'all together or sure. both. That would be uh, that would be quite interesting. But uh, yeah, so what, was there a time when you, before you described the stuff that happened to you, I mean, you were already on a spiritual journey, but was there a time where you got jolted like so many other people with some traumas where you really had to wake up and snap back to it? Because a lot of people talk about they were born with it. They went into the matrix. They, they went to sleep and then a series of events happened in, in honor around 2012 when they woke up, so to speak. Did anything like that happen to you? Uh, I think they kind of took it a little bit easy. I'm going to take one of these out because it, it, it sounds like I'm underwater. Um, mm. One of my ears. They took it kind of easy on me. Um, so the family I selected to uh, be born into for this incarnation, um, my mom and dad were very open to spiritual growth and exploring stuff. Um, and my first, um, where did I start? I started getting curious if you want, uh -huh. um, because of a friend of my mom who read um, Luna Mar cards, the little gypsy cards. Yeah. And um, from there, I looked for a course or a workshop because I, I wanted to know what was what that was all about. I was like, okay, do we have a choice here? Is everything fixed in, you know, uh, in, in stone, written in stone, um, that someone can just get information about you um, from these cards. Yeah. So long story short, I found a course and at that course, I met a guy who is a very good friend of me um, to this day, um, who could see angels like as, as tall as churches. And um, he introduced me to Rana's work, um, which were the wisdom teachings of Archangel Michael. And he gave me a book. And, and at that time, I didn't know anything about frequency, vibration, nothing. This was before 2007. Um, so one time when I visited him, he was like, I got a book that I think you should read. I think you'd like the vibration of it. I was like, vibration, a book vibrating. You know, I was like <laughs> totally unaware of anything. Um, all of those terms and terminology. Right. And um, one, one day, quickly after that, I was um, just thumbing through the book and I just opened it up and I started reading. And the first two paragraphs I read just got me bawling. And I was in the train, riding the train. I was like, what the heck is this? <laughs> um, so the frequency, if you will, of the messages just um, hit me straight in the heart and... Um, from there, that's actually when my um, my search started for what it, why are we here? Um, there's more between heaven and earth, you know, as Shakespeare yeah. said. Um, and I started investigating. I I just did all these workshops, seminars, um, from magnify healing, uh, Kuan Yin to um, ayahuasca. I tried all kinds of avenues to see where I fit in what resonated most with me. And I came back to the teachings of Archangel Michael again. Wow. Yeah. Archangel Michael was the, um, was the first uh, consciousness that came in for me too, as well. He hit He's me a good over one the head. to have in your corner. Yeah. Well, he hit me over the head with a two by four, but <laughs> Dark night of the soul, huh? Yeah, that's how we got started. Um, and so you, you've you spent then a lot of time, um, you know, really uh, learning as a student and educating yourself and expanding yourself that way. And then, of course, with your relationship with Rana and your husband, like begets like, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's how, amplified. How, how, much of, how much of your journey has been... Um, has involved, you know, like say direct communication 
infinite intelligence, Archangel Michael, other divine essences and that type of thing? Uh, you mean if I, uh, whether I, or not I channel, like get direct messages? Well, even, even just in your own personal guidance, I mean, for what you received that you may not share. I mean, is it, is it, uh, uh, I mean, I would imagine that, that researching and filling your mind with all the stuff that you did, that it would have uh, been somewhat of a catalyst for further expanded connection with infinite intelligence, regardless of what face of infinite intelligence was speaking to you. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, it's more in uh, the, in clear knowing, mm -hmm. which can yeah. be very confusing, especially when you start out on your journey, because um, in the beginning, it was very hard for me to differentiate between um, my own thoughts and information yeah. that was coming through. Yeah. Um, and but if you keep on paying attention, they will send confirmation your way. Um, I have that often when Brian and I. So I'm not as visual as Brian, my husband, is. Um, yeah. So he gets a more visual information, and I just get like flashcards, you know. Yeah. Um, and. Yeah, my my relationship's very similar. Um, she's very in tune, very clear, distinct messages. Mine are more images. I like the term you use, the knowing thing, because, but I've had my share of, you know, visitations, that, you know, apparitions, uh, different things like that. But for the most part, it's, uh, I can relate. And I think a lot of people probably could relate to what you're saying in terms of however they get their stuff. Yeah. Is like, is this my imagination <laughs> or is this, you know, but what is this? Right. Um, yeah. But, and as soon as you have that question, you know, ask for confirmation, they will yeah. give it to you one yeah. way or the other. Yeah. Especially now. Do mm -hmm. you see uh, uh, if you look back in retrospect on your journey, uh, like, for instance, this year, 2019, mm -hmm. is it is it uh I mean, has it been a game changer or is it my imagination? Because this year seems to really just be blowing up. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, um, you know how you think when you start on this path and you start forming certain ideas and expectations about what your role is here, whereas your own, our role is just to, you know, hold the light and anchor it here on earth yeah. and anything other than that is just a bonus, I think. Um, yeah. But I figured that what I was going to do would be more um, uh, teaching what helped me on my path to stay centered uh, and to stay in divine neutrality all the time. And those, that's Archangel Michael's teachings, the way I was taught. Um, but the... Um, the day I met Brian, Archangel Michael, I wrote that in my, in my bio, that was uh, another one of those moments where you get a message and you're like, you know, is there anybody behind me that you're yeah. talking to? Um, and I got the message that I was supposed to be working with um, the elemental realms, which was, I mean, I'd heard of the elemental realms. Uh, I heard of fairies and all that good stuff. Um, but I was like, what, what do you guys want me to do? Yeah. And that kind of really took off this year when we um, moved from Mount Shasta to uh, Maryville, Tennessee, where- oh, You were living in Mount Shasta. When did you leave there? Um, we left there December 4, no, uh, late November last year. So- Okay, so you've been where you're been at now. Here, yeah, you're uh, for a year now. Yep. So you're in Tennessee. We might have to head that way on our way to Florida. Oh, well, <laughs> you never know. let me know. Long, let me know, know when you're here. So, um, so, okay. So then th that, that happened. Now, have you been working with the elementals? Well, the have thing, been... well, I, I, they've been working with me. <laughs> okay. They, that's In a, the there sense is that, difference. yeah, well, um, yeah. you see, I'm just getting my toes wet in, in that respect. I yeah. don't know too much about the elemental realms yet. Um, uh, through joint meditations that I did with Brian, um, I was introduced uh, to some guides in the elemental realm. And um, in the course of this past year, I started getting those 
mental imprints. And we had a little elemental living with us here in the house for quite a while. Say like, um, I don't know, nine months maybe. Was that right? And then, and it, I'm sorry? Continue. <laughs> um, what kind of elemental was it? He, um, so his name is not what I call him, um, but I guess he kind of fished something out of my memory banks, a name that I would be comfortable with and that would express his nature, which is total joy. Yeah. Um, so the name he goes by in our household here is Marty. So would you call that like a nature being? A nature being? Yeah, like I said, I'm not sure yet about all the different beings in mm -hmm. the elemental realms. I guess he comes closest to what you call gnome. He's, he's like yeah. two feet high. Mm. He's got a very sunny disposition. Um, and he just... He just sparks joy in your heart. And so he started showing himself to me with like uh, imprints, like like little flashcards that you just show someone and it's gone again. Yeah, yeah. So then um, I started to get a feel uh, of his personality and everything. And um, we often travel in our meditations, we travel to Telos. Um, okay. We love Mount Shasta, um, as Brian uh, has a very close connection to the Lemurians there. And um, on one of these afternoons that we were getting ready to sit on the couch and, you know, preparing ourselves to uh, travel there, um, all of a sudden I saw just Marty coming, running into the living room with a backpack on, which told me that he was ready to go with us. So that's all these little different things that um, how he showed himself to me. Uh, mm -hmm. There was another instance where we were going to meet with uh, one of our dragon friends and tell us, I know this is going to be so out there for people who listen to this. This is, this is Sology. So this is not going to oh. be out there for anybody. Okay. We've been talking about dragons for the last year and for the last two weeks, really been talking okay. about it, but go ahead. Okay. So um, we were going to meet up with a dear friend of ours who is from the dragon rounds, Trinal Toft Pond. And um, so we were getting ready to, go to meditation and again Marty comes running but this time dressed in a little dragon suit <laughs> so he's he's got his own ways of uh showing me or, or giving me information without speaking so I don't have to hear his voice he just makes it clear in a way that I understand um, but he's not all about just joy there was this one instance where I had done something um, that did not agree with my uh, body and I had severe um, um, stomach cramps. And so uh, my husband was about to start giving me some energetic, some energy healing when he said, oh, guess what? Marty's joining in. And he was, so he gets more of the, um, the linguistic info input from Marty than I do. And he actually saw Marty pull like gray matter from my body. Wow. Um, that was his way of assisting in the healing. And according to Brian, he just gave him this look and he was like, I'm not all about just having fun. I've got skills too. Oh my God. Has, have, you, have you gotten any intel, you or your husband from Marty in terms of what the elementals uh, relation or role is is or is becoming in, as far as in terms with the, the well um as far as i know this entire sub universal experience was um meant to be a co uh, a collaboration between three kingdoms and that's the angelic kingdom humanity and the elemental kingdom okay and that also translates into each of us personally um, so when we started our incarnation cycle on earth, 
there were you have an angelic being that is with you throughout all of your incarnations and that's your guardian angel but you also have a body elemental and both of these beings agree voluntarily um, to be with you throughout all of your incarnations so mm. the better you do in ascending the better they're off too so if you're not doing it for yourself help your brothers and sisters out in the angelic and elemental kingdoms um, but on a grander scale, um, the, what the elementals have been doing is kind of cl cleaning up after us, yeah. our mess. Um, so what they do is they transform uh, the negativity that we as humanity as a whole, as a collective, have put out there. They're transmuting that. And uh, it has not been a fun time for them. It's been yeah, very, very hard on them. And the more that humanity can see them, acknowledge them, uh, thank them for their service, and maybe even assisting them in their mm. work, that would be so greatly appreciated. Yeah, yeah, we're all in this together. Um, exactly. So you, you've got, you had a, a, a connection with Archangel Michael. Mm -hmm. um, and also with your your relationship with Rana, mm -hmm. and of course your husband, uh, and you and you talk about the teachings of Archangel Michael. You refer to it. Can you just kind of give us a general overview? Because I I don't think I've ever heard anyone speak directly about that. Okay. Um, so Rana, um, Rana has, bringing, has been bringing forth um, monthly messages from Archangel Michael ever since 1991. Uh, wow. So that's, yeah, that's uh, quite, a, quite a time already. And in his messages, he, he puts out information that helps us in our ascension process. And in all of those messages throughout the years he has integrated meditations uh, breathing exercises all kinds of tools and techniques that can help you um, be centered you know if if you don't know what to do with um, if your life is like upside down and you have no idea where to start if all you can do is just to return to center then yeah. that's a lot of ground gained right there already um, so, and a couple of years ago, what Rana and her business partner, Randy did was to kind of condense all of that information of these almost 30 years of, uh, channel messages into, uh, a couple of levels that they call crystal mastery. And, um, the first level would be more, um, cleaning house. So, mm. um, learning how to quickly get into an alpha state there's a uh, infinity breath where you, you work with the infinity sign which is sacred geometry mm -hmm. to um, bring in more adamantine particles mm -hmm. um, which is create a light to help your uh, body to heal to help uh, transform uh, imbalanced thought forms uh, so the first level is more in how I view it, um, cleaning house, clearing, trying to get to center. And of course, that, that just keeps on being a, um, a thing, right? You never stop cleaning and yeah. healing and, and um, working through stuff. Yeah. Um, and opening up that, especially that uh, infinity sign, the, the infinity breath, it mm. opens up certain energetic pathways. It... Um, it will help you um, get rid of certain etheric shields that we have pulled up in front of our hearts and the front and back portal of our hearts. Um, anybody who has gotten hurt in the past, what you do automatically is pull up a shield. You put up this wall. Of course, of course. And um, sounds like he's a, a major proponent of shadow work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, if anybody Clean knows the, about shadows, it's. Archangel Michael and his legions, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. He's, yeah, I'm familiar with him. <laughs> <laughs> I've, had, I've got a couple of stories with him. Um, now, one of the things that's happened 
especially this year, uh -huh. um, has been kind of an evolution where like last year, the, you know, the traditional teacher student type of dynamic started mm -hmm. to alter. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of practitioners that have come on this year talked about how the general consciousness or general awareness or general capabilities of their clientele had been changing and evolving very rapidly, how they had moved from certain modalities and processes, not always, but to new ones or modified ones, uh, to where this, this, this new frequency of self-empowerment was really starting to kick in, like, you know, physician heal thyself. So mm -hmm. a couple of things. One, uh, I'm curious as with these transmissions uh, from Archangel Michael, um, over these, this long period of time, because I know you've been closely connected to Rana. Uh, has there been intel, particularly more recently, in terms of what we're doing, where it's going, or how we're doing collectively, that type of stuff? Or is it all pretty much strictly uh, focused on the individual? He does touch about um, where we're going um, in the sense that he in one of the books, Gold, The Golden Promise, he touches on uh, what it will be like once we get to New Earth. Mm. And he does not mean to for that to be like an ethereal picture, a little bit like far off. Yeah. He wants us to believe in that. And because um, it is a real thing, but we have to do the legwork. Yeah. Um, or the shadow eating, right? Is that what you call it? <laughs> That's what Morgan calls it. Morgan's a shadow eater. She's turned me into one too. But uh, no, I'm I'm just making jokes. But um, but no, I was just curious about that. Um, I, I you know that's more of a trivial thing because to me, uh, that's what it's all about. That's how we expand ourselves and and as within without. So mm -hmm. you know, no marching, protesting, boycotting. We don't need to do any of that type of hell raising or anything we just work on ourselves and yep exactly. get up every morning and be responsible as uh, co-creators uh, but this is a really interesting mix because you've got the situation with rana which obviously was divinely orchestrated you know not to mention your your the other things you've got out there including archangel michael including the elementals and then of course with your husband and his connection to mount shasta and tell us mm -hmm. it's got to have given you a, a really really uh, broad perspective uh, and experience on, and, and really uh, on what's going on and such. I mean, where do you see us at? Where, where are you at with this? What's it like for you to have gone through all that and, and look at where we are today collectively or even in your individual, uh, in your individual experience? Have you seen a lot of expansion? Is it, is it becoming more rapid? It, it has, um, partly because of uh, me coming together with Brian um, and I, we both know that we were not going to be together until we both were ready. Um, so I'm, I'm 50 years old. Brian just turned 52. Um, and I was at a point in my life where I was like, hey, you guys, I'm okay with being by myself um, yeah. as long as I can do my angel work. Um, and then, you know, I guess funny? we were both. Yeah, I know. I Isn't mean, funny? I said the same thing and Morgan said the same thing. I was, uh, it's, it's when you're, you know, you have to be holding yourself as long as you, and it also depends on what your uh, mission and joint mission is. Yeah. Um, sure. I, I, there's a plan for everybody. And like Rick in your, I, I, I caught a couple of minutes of your uh, previous show. What mm -hmm. Rick said is we're all important. That's right. Everybody, Absolutely. there's nothing works with, you know, without um, person, this person or that person, everybody, every, we need everybody to be on board. It's an all or nothing proposition, isn't it? Yep. Um, that is, and it doesn't mean that if someone's not doing the work that um, everything will fall apart because Gaia is ascending and humanity is ascending. And everybody's ascending. The question is more like, when are you going to be ascending? Are you going to catch this wave? Or are you yeah. like, you know, I'm going to sit gonna back, get, relax, yeah. and I'll, I'll take the next train. 
Yeah. But or get in the smashed, end, yeah. Or get smashed by the next wave as a tsunami. <laughs> Let go or be dragged. <laughs> <laughs> kind of um, like that. Yeah. So, so you, you and uh, Brian, you met <clears throat> during your involvement. During was it post twenty twelve? Yep, it was. It was. It was pretty recent. We uh, we met in twenty seventeen. So uh, okay. that's like uh, two years ago. I was actually um, in Atlanta, Georgia, for a business meeting for a company I worked uh, for back in Holland. And um, that meeting uh, got pushed back a couple of times. And um, that's how I know that, you know, they were orchestrating something. Yeah. The and, you, me, we, and it. Right? I'm sorry? The you, me, we, and it was orchestrating something. <laughs> yep, exactly. And um, so I called Ron. I said, I'm on this side of the pond. Um, would you like for me to, is it okay if I come and visit you for a couple of days before I go back to Holland? And she's like, sure. But um, so Randy and I were planning on going to Mount Shasta for the Great American Eclipse. And we were going to meet this author, um, Brian Tillman. Uh, do you want to come and join us? I was like, sure. And boom, bada bing, that was yeah, it. Yeah, boom, bada bing. I thought you weren't Italian. <laughs> <laughs> hey, boom, you pick, so, pick up some. Fabian, uh, boom, bada bing. Exactly. Uh, so, and, and you know, there's a lot of talk about, we don't identify with any of these labels, certainly don't uh, uh, identify with the term twin flames at all, <laughs> but I'm not taking anything away from anybody. Um, but there's a lot of talk about these, these couples coming together. Mm -hmm. that seem to have their individual purposes. They have a joint purpose. They have, uh, seems like some type of uh, a part of their mission within the many missions is to kind of anchor this higher frequency of mm -hmm. oneness through this relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a lot of really cool stories. Um, was it a, was, how was it for you guys? Was it fast and furious? Did you have a lot of bumps and bruises? Uh, was it all fluffy love and light or was there a little bit of a power and <laughs> tribulation involved? No, it was, uh, it was fast and furious. I mean, I met him that day and the next day we were leaving again. Um, and you were, what? you were leaving. So, um, we got, so we went to Mount Shasta. I met him next day. We saw the eclipse and somehow we ended up watching the eclipse together without Ron and Randy. <laughs> oh, no <laughs> mm. Let the parents you out. You think oh, someone no. was, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> um, and, and then we had to leave. I had to go back to Holland because my flight was the next day. And, wow. but I mean, it was so, uh, I mean, we were watching the eclipse and we weren't watching the eclipse. All we were talking about was our connection to Archangel Michael and, um, we have a term of endearment. We call him the boss. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I went back home. And as soon as I got home, we started um, FaceTiming. And, you know, it was like talk to each other five hours a day. And wow. That's a long time. Um, yeah. And yeah, some of these I just stories, had to get back. Yeah. Some of these stories of, 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 you know, people, well, same thing you did, Morgan did. You know, coming from the other side of the world, uh, you know, just going against conventional wisdom, going against normal, <laughs> normalcy. Again, yeah. Like, uh, are you and, sure? How, let me ask you, how, and we would love to have him on individually, love to further collaborate with you and even have you guys on as a couple. Um, but how has the relationship affected you on an individual level? And I say these things so because I believe, and I've said this many times, and I'll keep saying it, that the highest activations, channelings, downloads, transmissions come from conversations like this. Because we are the boots on the ground. We're doing the work. We're embodying this stuff. And, uh, and it's through our experience where I think we learn and get code. But how has the relationship, because you were in the same situation, we were, and many other people I've heard to say the same thing. I don't want to be in a relationship. I don't have to be in one. I'm good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, give me my peace and quiet. Head. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then you get hit on the head, right? But what what has it done for you individually? Uh, you know, as a divine feminine, or is is just as a uh, a soul? You know, taking the gender out of it. I mean, 
what's your what's your take on that what's the effect been on you um i think there are several levels there um one we all embody certain uh, memory seed atoms within ourselves in codings or keys and i think just uh being together physically will activate certain uh things uh, the start uh, of another growth process. Um, then on a more conscious level, um, Brian expanded my view much more mm. um, in the, in, on, a, on a spiritual level. I mean, I, I had never heard of the Lemurians. Really? Uh, no, I hadn't. And uh, so it, it has gone really fast for me since I met him. And now, whenever I just think of um, of the mountain, ah, see, there I go. Ah. I'm very, very attached to that place. It's a very, very sacred place. Um, so there was the unconscious um, sparking something in the other person on a conscious level. There is uh, teaching and receiving, giving and receiving, and then and then there's the the total new experience of being in a relationship where you are safe and comfortable to talk about uh, shadow work, if you will. Yeah. You know, um, I used to be a very, very closed person, uh, a, a very introverted, and yeah. I'm still in a way, he's totally divine masculine in, and also uh, of Archangel Michael's energy that he's very focus driven and, um, you know, going for what he wants. So if there's like a discussion about um, a situation, he's like, okay, let's get this resolved. Let's situation. get this resolved. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if there's um, a situation. <laughs> well, and it, but it, I love Where that. I as, as a, um, me, I'm more in the, in the feminine energy in that I need to, I need to feel into it a little bit. Yeah. Don't rush me. Give me my you time. Know, and that's, a, that's a really, really good point you're bringing up because um, there is a difference. And I wonder if it's less to do with Archangel Michael. Six months before I uh, woke up, you know, for good, uh, eight years ago, I was telling my kids, you know, at 49 years old, I'm running through the house saying I served in Archangel Michael's army. At the time, I wasn't even in light worker circles or anything. I didn't know what ascension was, but so I'm saying that because I have, um, you know, a kindredness with that consciousness. Mm -hmm. I know it's a big part of me. But what you're describing, I wonder if it's just more of the masculine combination, masculine, wounded, and divine. You know, as their transition expanding and vice versa, uh, because I I I can relate to that. Uh, and mm -hmm. I've backed off of that. We got to do it now kind of thing. And I've learned from her, it's okay to just say, hey, we're out of alignment. <laughs> right. You know, you go yeah. your way, I'll go my way, and I'll meet you in the middle sooner or later. And it always works. And of course, there's always a huge elevation after you work through it. But one of the things, too, that I find interesting, I like the way you put this in a very down-to-earth way, is, uh, you know, in the old paradigm, it was always, it was the same dynamic. Let's work through this. You know, and, and, you know, what's wrong, honey? Nothing, you know, and that whole thing, right? Mm -hmm. Where uh, there was either internally or externally uh, projection or finger pointing or whatever. And now you're in these conscious relationships where no matter what happens, mm -hmm. it's all about me, no matter what. <laughs> exactly. So that takes that off the table. But I think we're still kind of working through, you know, uh, diluting those old loops, you know, and, and dissolving those old loops, I guess. It's, so. it's, it's softening. Yeah. It's softening up. Um, divine feminine is more 
taking up space more and divine masculine is more softening yes it's there's nothing wrong with the old energy it just had to be brought back into balance yeah um and that's and that's one of the most beautiful things that i've been able to witness within this relationship is how how that communication is just so effortlessly yeah i mean don't get me wrong there are still um situations situations (laughs) happening um but But you're you're able to look at it from a higher perspective right and that it that makes it so much uh so much more easier and more graceful in coming to a solution and um yeah i'm i'm very blessed we are and and, you know sometimes too and i think these couples are at least afforded the opportunity with what's available. It's 444. (laughs) (laughs) Angel number. Uh, But uh, to to, uh, create a new template, Mm -hmm. to find a new way, to create the new good book in terms of, like even in this example you're talking about, there's been many times that we don't even speak about whatever the situation was we just come together and telepathically through our hearts, whatever, you know, it's, it's, it just elevates, you know, mm-hmm. now, we've been very open about uh, a lot of things, you know, sacred sexuality, um, you know, some of the uh, interdimensional dimensional episodes we have and such. Um, uh, so I know you guys connect together because you mentioned it earlier. And uh, we do it every night. We put our hands together and then see what happens. Uh, Have you had any um, standout uh, things occur when you guys connect together uh, in terms of, you know, what might normally happen to one person alone that we've all experienced? Now you have two? Um, It's kind of... It's so normal it it has become so normal in a short period of time that it doesn't really stand out to me anymore in that the ritual that we have is that we connect our chakras together and whenever we go to sleep um we 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 build a crystalline sphere of light around us Mm. with archangel michael's protective energy Mm. around it wow um how about um, in wonder, your own? How about in your own experience? Have you had? Do you have? You know, I mean, like I was like you. I didn't know what Lemuria was. <laughs> I didn't know a lot of things till I met Morgan. Uh, you know that are commonplace out there now. Um, but galactic. I never really gave galactic any thought at all until I met an ET named Morgan Lee. <laughs> 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 but, <laughs> but in terms of my own communion with the universal. It was uh, ascended masters or angels, you know, or, or animals or trees, you know, different things like that. I never, I never even, uh, you know, fathomed that. Uh, do you have any type of galactic connection or kindred connection uh, that's important to you or anything like that? Uh, I mean, I've always, I it never. There, it was never even a question for me that there was more out there and that we were definitely not the most intelligent life form in the universe. Um, we're very powerful as human beings, but we haven't really done a good job of taking care of our earth uh, for a long time. Um, as far as galactics go, I'm, I'm more drawn to connecting with the angelic realms and yeah. the elemental realms. Yeah. Um, but through, I know that um, Telos is a, um, how would Brian to put that? There's a lot of traffic. There's a lot, lot of what? traffic there. Um, yeah. Uh, they're they're kind of like a, they host a lot of yeah. galactics in Telos. Um, so in, in that way, um, I experienced um, some meditations I did with Brian and knowing that there were ships coming in and that uh, 
you know, Mar Sodama was busy. <laughs> yeah. And and what you, and what kind of uh, you know what kind of information have you, you know, in a general way, have you picked up from the the family at Telos, um, the energy at Telos? Have you gotten any intel, you guys, for you know, again, where we're heading, what we're doing, what their involvement is, that type of thing? Um, Brian has more than me. He would speak to that uh, much better. That's what his book was about. Um, Tell us welcoming new earth. Um, but it's so this divine neutrality comes back over and over again, because as we step into uh, the new golden age, we cannot, we cannot step into 5d if we're not if we not if we do not have a way of getting back to center quickly enough because we would just create chaos yeah um yeah. because it's like instantaneous a manifestation mm -hmm. and so you have to be able to control um your mind and your feelings makes total um, sense it makes total sense and i think that's why you're starting to see over the last few weeks you know uh, people have been talking about the level of intensity and speed of these things that are occurring to them. And, and it, what's different about it than earlier in the year, there's doesn't seem to be much of an integration period anymore. It's just like, boom, boom, boom. Like, you know it, you know what to do, do it. And, uh, and I think we're being pushed that way in an accelerated fashion. So we can, uh, I don't want to say accommodate the 5D <laughs> so that we can be, so that we can, uh, well, so yeah, so that um, it's more the other way around, really. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, that's a good way you put it. And, and I think that's, we can do that here. We certainly can do it at the next level. And that's know. not, it's not easy. I mean, um, so if you're home in your bubble, it's easy to think good thoughts, right? And if there's nothing critical going on in your life at the moment, it's easy to be love and mm -hmm. peace. But go into a 3D job where uh, the rat race is, you know, um, the main way of, of, of being. Um, try and at a continuous level, send out love all the time. Yeah. Use the violet flame to balance energies all the time. That's what Telos has been doing all of these thousands and thousands of years. They have they have kept the balance for humanity. Um, imagine a temple um, of the violet flame. These these temples and these flames of God consciousness had to be tended to twenty four seven all the time. Yeah, I mean I try to do my little part by using the violet flame in my meditations to assist the elemental kingdom to transmute um, um, imbalanced energies. And once I've done that for 10 minutes, I'm like, oh my God, imagine doing this for 24 hours. And, you know, it's, yeah. it takes a lot of focus. Yeah. And, and that's a place where we as humanity needs to get to. But first, the return to center, get neutral. Um, try no to charge. see the situations in your life from a higher perspective. Yeah. Yeah. To, to a place of no charge. Yeah. You know, neutrality. Yeah. I, I like that. And, and I think people are starting to become aware too, that, you know, we focus a lot on the deficiency, <laughs> our deficiency of this and that, you know, mm -hmm. the, the negative charge, mm -hmm. but we got to remember that for every every deficient degree of a negative charge, we've got too much light, basically. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like it's like too much light in this realm is, is the same thing as too much dark, you know, if we want to use those terms, but charge in terms of charge, positive, negative. But, uh, but I think, uh, do you see more people coming into balance and being able to sustain that balance and expand the, uh, the, you know, the energy of a neutral, a neutral balance? Are you seeing more of that in, in your everyday life, in your work, in that type of thing? Well, I certainly see more people looking for it. Mm. Um, then everybody is, you know, the more off track you are, the harder you get hit on the head 
um, uh, and that's just your your team uh, telling you, you know, get your in order so yeah. that you know you'll be able to move forward with ease and grace. And get your what? I mean, get your what in order? Beep. <laughs> <laughs> it's a solidity. You can go ahead and let it. Fly. Okay, get your shit together. <laughs> um, I use the word shift because I got too many complaints. So I say, get your shift together. Are yeah, that's a good shift? one. I, that's what I said, right? Or what is this shift going on? <laughs> exactly. Mm. Um, but we can do it. We just, you know, yeah. tune in, tune into your heart space and above all, try to not care what other people think Yeah. so that you are more empowered to step into your true self. And I know mm -hmm. that's not easy. I mean, it, it's taken me years to, um, you know, to come out and say, yeah, I'm one of those woo woo people. Yeah, I'm one of those woo, -woo people. So, yeah. you know, and now I'm like, that's me. And you can either take it or leave it. I mean, you I know, you're, right. you're right about that. It's time for us to own it. Mm -hmm. You know, I did. Uh, speaking of uh, uh, cosmic uh, galactic superhighways, I was passing through Sedona <laughs> with Morgan <laughs> about two weeks ago. And I went through 36 hours of in your face, which is the third time I've been to Sedona. And it always happens that way. But in your face, anything you're you need to clear now for yourself, for the collective. We're going to do it. And they, I got brutalized a little bit. <laughs> but um, anyway, um, it was, a, you know, it was a, a situation where um, I came in. Well, I went out to do um, a spirit walk. I do these spirit walks. That's kind of how Sology was founded. And Morgan will tell me, whenever you're out of whack, just go get the camera and start doing your thing because it's your own way of meditation. And, and I don't really think about it, but that's what I did two nights in a row. And mm -hmm. the second night I dropped a couple of F-bombs on a, about a 10 minute uh, spirit walk, but that's what I was getting. What I was getting was forget all this, this stuff that's going on, the inner work and the shadow work and, and the human-esque uh, experience is the most relevant thing, but you can pull yourself back in right now, Todd. This is what I was hearing uh, and own it. And tell mm -hmm. the world that you're a star seed. And mm -hmm. tell the world your relationship with the consciousness of Archangel Michael or Yeshua or Magdalene. Tell mm -hmm. the world of your future memories and your past memories and the importance of what it all means. I mean, be be what you are. Mm -hmm. And in the in the in the live, I went into we're not in the mainstream, but we can become the mainstream. And I think this is what I'm getting at is toward the end of this year, I started to see. Um, in others and in myself, a call to own it, you know, mm -hmm. to own, just to own it. We don't need to be shy. What, what can they do to us? Well, who, whoever they is, I mean, what, what can happen to us? Well, that's, that's just a, that's an old fear that has probably uh, left an imprint on a lot of star seeds from previous incarnations where you did get, you know, you, you were burned on at the stake or you were drowned yeah. as a witch and, um, there's a lot of, you know, you're not just clearing the imbalances of everything you've created in this life, but yeah. you're also clearing all that stuff from previous lives and you're clearing for the collective as a service to humanity. A lot of light workers are. Um, yeah. Well, it's true. That's, that's a big deal. You know, it really is. And it has, it has left an indelible impression upon us, but I think at the same time, and I guess that's where I'm at with it. And that's what that rant in Sedona was about. And it was really me, you know, if I do a spirit walk, it's no different than, it's just me talking to me, you know, throwing in we's instead of eyes or eyes instead of we, whatever. But it was like, you know, we have enough information now. Mm -hmm. We have all these incredible people, some who've been doing it since 1991, like Rana. Mm -hmm. you know? Some of these people like Morgan, 20 years, and some people two or three years, and their intel's, We've got this kid on a last year, right? yeah. what the, like, I mean, like what are, you know, I'm like learning at warp speed, having a conversation with this guy. So we have enough information. Uh, we have enough pieces of the puzzle that we, there's enough out there in the buffet of things that we can pick what we resonate with us and expand our exactly. foundation on that. So what do we do with it now? Do we walk around worrying about these literal things which we know can be changed energetically. I mean, 
I think personally, we can clean up this earth a lot quicker by cleaning up ourselves and not worrying about any, you know, any type of, uh, you know, reform in terms of, you know, like uh, recycling or, or what kind of gases or energy uh, emissions we have. We can do this right here. We're energetic beings and we transform the external when we transform ourselves, like you said, and work through the shift. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Go through it one by one. You don't have to tackle it all at the same time. Has, has your life become more and more amazing over the last two, three years? Oh my gosh, yeah. If you just asking me that brings, gives me like a. Yeah, yeah. Very grateful, very blessed. Um, I don't yeah. actually, I, I, I don't know how I, um, I had a very good childhood and life, don't get me wrong, but I don't know how I got through those years without um, my connection with the angelic realm, which yeah. was of course always there, but yeah. without that conscious knowledge of them being there, having my back, having everybody's back. I yeah. mean, it's, it's such a comfort that we're not in this shift alone. Yeah, right on. Very thankful. Very thankful. Um, yeah. And so like, I mean, in do you ever have like, I like to ask this, these type of questions because of the people that are just waking up now, so to speak, mm -hmm. or maybe they woke up earlier, but they're having the same type of experience you're having. Do you ever, uh, does your human ever say, what the hell am I doing in America? What am I doing over here? And this and that. And do you ever have a meltdown? Do you ever like get get off balance and if so how do you pull yourself out i'm a very even type of being so real meltdowns not well, really maybe triggered would be a better word you know triggered is um that's usually when my ego gets into the driver's seat instead of on the passenger seat where he belongs that's what I always say. Did you steal that from me? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, kidding. I'm kidding. I love that analogy, though. I actually but put it, my. But it's, you know, it's, there's so many people, not so many people. Um, whenever I hear someone say, you know, you got to get rid of the ego, no. Yeah. The ego is part of us, but it's just to be a servant to the soul, in service to the soul. Um, it's not supposed to be in the driver's seat. And it's there to protect us. It's there to um, keep us from harm yeah. um, by giving us these nudges like, mm -hmm. better think twice about doing that. You know, um, the ego is, it's nothing wrong with the ego. It just needs to be in the passenger seat. I call it the universal equalizer, <laughs> at least in this realm. That's a good one. You know, I mean, it's like, uh, well, you know, Morgan says, you get to the point where it's like a red flag. Mm -hmm. It's like it runs up the red flag for you. Like you just said, you know, like, you sure you want to do that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, of course, I don't know how mine works. If I say, if, it, if I hear you sure you want to do that, I don't know what part of me says, yeah, I'm going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on the my... situation. But you know what's funny, too, is what I found out, too, is through my work and examining people and myself, is that the stubborn human is the stubborn soul and what i mean by that is a stubborn human obviously has a hard time fitting in you know square peg round hole but the stubborn soul holds the light up in all regards mm -hmm. you know what i mean i mean the stubborn mm -hmm. soul is going to listen to that guidance and do it no matter how insane it is it's going to do it <laughs> yeah. so the way uh, i usually discern whether it's ego or uh, my soul talking is um, I try to analyze the decision is the decision or the more the um, my answer to a um, this is decision I need to make. Am I making a decision based on fear or yeah. based on love? Yeah. And if it's fear based, if I'm doing something out of fear, uh, like trying to stay in a job because, hey, how am I going to pay the rent? 
yeah. um, that's that's not an empowered decision. That's a decision, you know, based on I won't be able to um, provide for myself. Yeah. Um, sure. Which is a really it's it's a boy. Now we get into an area which is we can talk about that for like hours. Well, that's it. That's it. Well, you and I think we could talk for a long time. Period. Mm -hmm. uh, and normally we're already up and we're already up. Uh, we're a little over an hour, but normally I'd probably try to coax you into going a little bit longer. But I got to tell you, man, this last twenty four hours has been energetically exhausting. So I don't Time have much. Left. I don't have much left in me. <laughs> but I want to <laughs> ask you one other thing. Have you? Have, and and love to have you come back. I'd love to um, be back. Um, in terms of like you and, and Brian, mm -hmm. have he you just found, came in, by the way. Oh, he did. We should mm -hmm. tell him to come over here and say hello, Brian. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I need to give him uh, one ear. Yeah. Or should I unplug the? Uh... No, just unplug it. Unplug it. No. Say something, yeah. Todd. Hello, Brian. Hey, Todd. How are you? Very good. I hope to get you over here on the show, have a conversation individually and, and together. Love yeah, to that'd be great. Love it. Yeah. yeah, we'd love to hear your story. We heard a little bit about you. And I was going to, we're already gone over, we're five minutes over, but I wanted, I was going to ask her, but now that you're here, I can ask both of you. Have you guys found that through your connection and through meeting other people that um, there's any type of something happening along the uh, level of a triad? Uh, activations or stimulating other souls through your connection where a triad's created. Have you guys experienced anything like that? Well, what we're told is that we're twin souls. And so, which, you know, I don't claim to understand all the particulars of the definitions. We hear twin flames and, but we were told we're twin souls and basically the way that we interpret that is that um, when we come together, we're uh, a bigger piece of the puzzle together yeah. than we are individually. So when we work together, which we do yeah. uh, every day, um, working either on ourselves or planetary circumstances, the whole, you know, same thing that the rest of you guys are working on, um, we do feel like we're getting um, more momentum by meeting yeah. together and working together and um, predominantly bringing the, the white ray of purity and the blue flame of divine will together. Um, that's kind of our uh, core lineage. Um, Beautiful. Y'all have many lineages, but that's kind of the core that we resonate with. And so, um, we, we, we do feel like we're doing better work, more powerful work, more, more get more efficient, I guess, together than we would be just on our own. Yeah. Yeah. I can relate to that. We'll have to get together. If you guys are open to future collaborations Absolutely. And together, I'm, I'm sorry to run out of time today, but I, everything seems to be uh, validating for me to get off over here. There's a chainsaw <laughs> going and dogs are barking. And uh, yeah, it's a pleasure to meet you. Maybe we'll get up into, uh, now what, what town are you in in Tennessee? Maryville, just outside of Knoxville. We're right up against the Smoky oh, Mountain National okay. Park. So you're, at, you're near Knoxville. Yeah, I used to have an office there. Yeah, I know where that is, okay. Well, you know what? We're gonna be heading uh, that direction. We may have to stop by and see y'all. I feel, uh, I feel, yep. a, I feel a, a strong resonance and uh, yeah, we gotta follow our follow our guidance. So I look forward to, to uh, collaborating with you in the future. And uh, I look forward to giving you both a hug in person at some point. We've got Same some beautiful here. places that we could show you. So please, you know, if you're coming this way, let us know. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I mean it. I'm dead serious. So yeah. All right. Sure. You guys take care. <laughs> well, have a happy take birthday. Care. Yep. <laughs> See ya. Take care. Bye right. bye. Bye. And thank hey, thank you for the uh, for the ohm hoodies. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you very for those. Welcome. We needed them. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye. Bye.